He madring kila ma tulunga pala mitya daya moda diko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kya riva prartita Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamaya yang Tang mun changir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatumam Namaste. So let's talk about the tree of knowledge. This is a simile given in Bhagavad Gita in the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 3. So let me chant those verses and then I'll explain. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Urdva Mula Madhashakam Ashvatam Prahuravyayam Chandang Siyasya Prarnani Yastang Veda Saveda Vit Adhas Chordvam Prasritas Tasya Sakha Guna Pravridha Vishaya Pravala Adhascha mulanyanu santatani karmanu bandhini manushya loke narupam asyeha tato palabhyate nanto na chadir na cha sampratishta ashvatang enam suviruda mulam Asanga Shastrena Dridhena Chitva. There is an eternal tree with its roots above and branches below. Its leaves are the Vedic hymns. The real form of this tree is not perceived in this world, neither its beginning, continued existence, nor end. One who knows the secret of this tree is the knower of the Vedas. So what is the tree of knowledge? Well, what is the structure of a tree? It has roots, trunk, branches, and leaves. But the nature of this tree, the tree of knowledge, is that the roots are up and the branches are down. So what does this mean? Well, what if we turn it around? What if we turn the tree right side up? Then superimpose a very familiar figure. Now is it starting to look familiar? The tree of transcendental knowledge is the human form and the chakras. The chakras, the darshanam, which is the views of those chakras, and the yogas connected with it. So here's our good old diagram. Now you see how that diagram evolved. And you can understand the structure of this teaching, Dharma Sar. Because this essence of Dharma is nothing but the tree of knowledge. And just like any tree, it begins from the roots. Huh? Just like a banyan tree. You know, a banyan tree can be huge. I mean, there are banyan trees in India over a mile in diameter. And yet the seed of the banyan tree is like a mustard seed. It's just a tiny little thing. How does such a huge tree grow from a tiny seed? Well, it's a miracle. And in the same way, the ripened fruit of Vedic knowledge is the fruit of the tree of knowledge. So this tree has to be cultivated from the root, which means from the beginning of 
the Dvaita Vada, Karma Yoga, and the ordinary state of consciousness, Jagrat, where we see the world and all of its objects, our body and our empirical self, the ego, as real. That's the state of duality. But when we accumulate enough pious credits, we can move to the next stage, the Vishishta Dvaita Vada. And this is Bhakti Yoga, and it brings us into the state of consciousness of dreams, Svapna. But of course, we're wide awake. That's why in Bhakti Yoga, we worship a more or less imaginary uh, form of the Supreme, which we project so that we have something relatable that we can understand on the human level and have a relationship with. Now then in the next higher stage, the Vivartavada, we've understood the truth that actually God has no form. God can make a form, but in essence or in a natural way, there is no form. All forms are illusion because they have a beginning and an end, a boundary, a limit, and God is unlimited. But because our ordinary human intelligence can't grasp this, in bhakti we project a form, but in the vivarta this is the mature stage of raja yoga, meditation, and the ultimate aim of meditation, of course, is to realize the void. And finally, there's the Ajatavada. The Ajatavada and is the stage of Jnana Yoga. And this is Turiya consciousness. We've talked a lot about Turiya on this channel. You should already know that it's the basis, the root of all the other consciousness. So you see, this tree has the roots up and the branches down. That's its nature. So when we approach the yoga system, we have to approach from the roots. We can't simply jump up to the branches and leaves. Doesn't that make sense? So similarly, without a long practice of karma yoga, then it's not possible to realize any of the higher stages. Let's be honest. Karma and bhakti yoga are the prerequisites for meditation, not that we can skip over them. So, of course, we've given this message hundreds of times, <laughs> but people still think that due to pride, they can jump over it, they can jump over their teacher, they can jump over their instructions or the scriptures or whatever, but the only result is that they fall down. So on this channel, we've created a wonderful system and it has many, many aspects. But what I want to talk about today is the different levels and the number of series and videos in those levels. So here's a chart and basically the introductory or general level has 10 series, 320 videos. Karma Yoga has uh, many series, about 12 series and 30 videos. And Bhakti Yoga has 12 series, 144 videos. Raja Yoga has 10 series, 494 videos. And Jnana Yoga has 18 series with 199 videos. Now these figures are somewhat out of date. <laughs> We're probably already beyond 1,200 videos, but you get the point. The point is we have made a conscious effort from the beginning of this channel to cover all the different stages of spiritual life and all the principal yogas and their methods. So, of course, there's a lot more to it that I've been able to explain here. This is just a hint.
an appetizer. So in the video description, there's a link to the Dharmasar video guide. So you download that and that will explain everything in detail, including links to the appropriate series. And of course, the way to get the most out of this channel is to begin at the beginning, go through the introductory videos, the different series, uh, both classified and non-classified, in the order given in the video guide. And that way, you will get the basic concepts, the roots, needed to attain the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which, of course, is perfect enlightenment. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shatihi Aung.